my great honor to have been given the responsibility of overseeing the construction of a shrine to the Apostles out in the Far Vale. The site is on the very borders of our newly founded city. Through a distant canyon, the natural waterfalls and geothermal springs grant us an amazing opportunity to use our combined knowledge to create a place of solemn worship and reflection that glorifies not only the memory of the Apostles, but also our own recent advances in construction. Already we have outpaced the Empire we left behind. We will arrive in the morning and break ground on a shrine to honor our past and the future of our city. Construction on the shrine continues. We decided to build our shrine at the top of the Vale, high in the cliffs above the river. In the lower parts of the Vale, where we quarried the stone, we constructed an aerial lift to bring cargo straight to the shrine. With all of our success thus far, I cannot ignore the ill omens. The two-headed wolf pup I found, dead in the forest, with the strange noises at night that no one can identify, and the murder, first in our new city. Two journeymen were feared lost in a side passage collapse, but one emerged two days later, raving mad and covered in his companion's blood. We are no strangers to violence, but I cannot shake the feeling that we have crossed some forbidden invisible threshold. was a revolt, a bomb. The native people, the enemies of my enemies, rose up, striking out as we had always dreamed. Ivan and our daughter might have known freedom, but instead they are dead. Killed by the only people that might have saved us. The Soviet cowards with me in the veil say there is nothing left. That we must await rescue. They say they will protect me, but they jump at the dark and supplies run low. There will be no rescue. I will live, and my captors will not. Survival is the only truth in this world. They are a superstitious lot. I slip the pollen into their rations, and when they are reduced to weeping husks, I will show them a new face, something they have feared since childhood. Baba Yaga, Grandmother Serpent, Witch. They will die screaming in terror. They deserve so much worse. If I cannot live free, then I will survive alone, in the shadows, until death reunites me with Yvonne and our child. Baba Yaga's weapon. It's a scythe, but it's been dressed up to look like a witch's broom. Everything she did served the myth in some way.
have suspended all construction at the shrine and ordered the workers to prepare for the return trip. I should have left weeks ago, sought advice from our city's wisest. The violence increased, slowly at first, and I passed it off as raw nerves, pressure to succeed. But now it cannot be denied that something evil inhabits the veil. It preys on our worst nature, makes us susceptible to dark suggestions. Yesterday, a young stonecutter brought me news of a scaffolding collapse that ruined much of the day's work. Before I knew what was happening, my aide had to pull me off the youth, who lay bloodied and insensible. When I washed my hands, I found a fragment of his teeth embedded in the flesh of my knuckles. I do not know myself any longer. It is time to leave. is mine. I have watered the ground and cultivated the dreaming blossoms. No one will enter. No one shall leave. I will not endure the outside world any longer. Here at last, I am in control.
I speak to myself, if only to hear another voice. It fills the space and the hours, but I have nothing to say. When the quiet overwhelms me, I try to sleep. I dream of what I've lost. I hope they died well. I hope that my dreams are only lies.
I thought I survived to spite my tormentors. But now I think I survived to spite myself. This is not a life worth saving. No life is. There are new people in the valley. I will teach them that this existence is not worth living.
I knew it was a mistake when I threw the drink in his face, but I did it anyway. I thought Minister Dyatlov's shocked look would be worth the loss of funding for my research. I was a fool. The KGB bastards knocked down my door before dawn. Five years. A work camp. They no longer have the spine to call it what it is. They call it Freedom Station, liars. It is a gulag. I promised myself I would not let them break me, but I wept for mercy in my first week. I must find a way out. There is a guard, a red cheeked boy named Ivan. More sweetness than sense. It pains me to use one so guileless as he, but I will not rot here. thought it would be simple. Most of these rough, stinking thugs take what they want from the prisoners. I chose Ivan because I thought he would bend, but it is worse than I thought. He is a good man. He does not want to be here any more than I. That sentiment holds little weight when he eats well and sleeps with a blanket, but I credit him with a moral compass these others lack. This place sickens him. He knows his part in it, hates what he does. I caught him pushing back when he thought no one was watching to calm his guilt. I told him it was not enough. Showed him how to do more. We worked well together. Planned our escape. But it is too late. I am pregnant. We are damned.
officer wandered out of the Vale, just as our rescue party prepared to enter. His body bore the marks of torture, a sight we knew well. The witch descended on them during the revolt, killing Serafima along with her captors. He told us of the house that walks, of her fearsome voice. A child's story made flesh. He died the next day. Baba Yaga leaves no survivors. I wanted to go on, to bury your grandmother, but no one would enter the Vale after that. In the village, I learned to be a good man. I lived to honor her. I worked hard, but I dreamt of killing the witch every night. I might have gone years ago, had the fever not taken your mother. I stayed for you, Nadia. I am a lucky man. I lived a good life I did not deserve. A new fight is coming, but it is not mine. If I am to find revenge for Seraphima, it must be now. I go to kill the witch, to lay your grandmother to rest. I will not be coming back. Forgive me. Raids who haunt the veil, vale, but they are no longer human. They wear familiar faces, cry out for help in the voice of dead friends, but I will not believe their lies. My sword keeps them at bay, or quiets them if they will not stop screaming. I tried to lead us to safety, I did, but someone collapsed the passages leading back to the city. Once we realized there would be no escape, we turned on each other. Now. A madman with a bow is perched high above the veil, and he brings down the message birds I sent with pleas for help. The rays return. More than I can drive away. No one will survive this veil. Perhaps it's for the best. Let these, my last words, be a warning. <laughs> 